what the heck is a pop-up setting and why should you try it out? Hey, I'm James and uh, this video is about uh, pop-up settings, which I learned about from another jeweler and metalsmith, Vicki Johnston, years ago. And I just thought that they were like really like simple and creative and fun and uh, are really useful in those shorter kind of workshops where you're together with people for maybe just an afternoon or a weekend or something like that. And so um, he's made a couple different little handouts and I'll include uh, better images of these. Um, but one of them is just the um, kind of the flat back settings for them. And then the other one are some different variations. And so don't worry, I'll, uh, I'll put in a good image of these so that you can pause the video and check them out for yourself. Uh, but essentially, it's a way of uh, just sawing and drilling out sheet metal and pulling the tabs out of the way so that then you can just set an object. Now for this video, I'm gonna be setting small little uh, thermonite pieces that I've made. And if you're not familiar with thermonite, it's a material that I developed that's made out of layered recycled paper and bonded together with a plant-based resin. So um, the great thing about these is it's kind of a one-step fabrication. You don't have to worry about soldering and uh, there's lots of different variations that you can come up with uh, for your own designs that you might be interested in. So we'll get into uh, some of the approaches and layout for it and uh, get them fabricated. Okay, so from his handouts, we're going to be working on the, the pop-up tab. He calls them prongs, but I really think of them as tabs, and working with the flat-backed object. So we're going to be setting this uh, little thermonite cabochon that I've made ahead of time, and we're just going to lay out on this disc that will ultimately become the backing plate to turn this into a pendant. So uh, particularly when working with circles, which I do quite a bit, uh, something that I found super useful that comes out of the wood turning world is uh, this little center finding gauge. And so uh, a lot of uh, wood turners and woodworkers and things will use it to just quickly find the center of a circle. So how that works is you can just lay it down on those supports and have a scribe or a sharpie and just follow that one side and that'll give you the diameter of the circle. And we just want to have that as the starting point for laying this out. So the next thing that I would want to do is decide where on this plate the piece is going to go. So you don't want to set it too far down because you're going to have some tabs coming up around it. But then you also want to leave some space up at the top to drill a hole for a jump ring to attach it to the, uh, the necklace and everything. So we'll just pick a good spot and you want to, I put that center line first so that I can kind of eyeball and trace this so that it is in the center of it, but a little bit towards the bottom. And we have that size, and that's gonna be important because when we're cutting, we're gonna just cut slightly past the size of the object that we're setting so that we can bend the, tab, the tabs up and then fold them back over the object. Now, I've decided that I wanna do four tabs to hold this piece securely. And so uh, what I've also found is just by having a square template, you can take a square and line it up with the, uh, the center line that you've already chosen and find a square that is approximately hitting the, uh, the diameter of the circle that you're working with. And you can adjust it by eye if you need to, but we're gonna, th so those corners of the square are gonna be where we're gonna place our four tabs. So I don't need to draw the whole square. I'm just gonna lay out. And uh, I think layout is some of the most important initial stages in a piece to make sure that uh, as you're, you're fabricating and sawing, you don't have to further uh, file and adjust and everything. So those are the tabs. And I've found it uh, also really useful to just connect those center lines of the tabs because uh, now you don't have to cut out a center area. You just need to drill and pierce out the tabs. 
But uh, for this particular design, I'm just going to uh, pierce out a circle that will expose some of the interesting patterns of the thermonite from behind. So again, I'll just pick a circle template and most good templates will have the, the perpendicular diameters of that circle marked. So then what you can do is you can line those up with the square lines and then that'll give you a centered circle in the back. It'll be in line with your piece. So we have that. And always keeping in mind where the, the top part and where we're gonna be uh, placing that, that hole for the jump ring and everything. So this is uh, pretty much laid out how we're uh, going to pierce this out and start cutting the tabs and everything. What I would recommend is um, you want to center punch where you're going to start drilling and you can do sort of final finishing and clean up at whatever stages in this that you'd like to. So uh, I've done a little uh, pre-finishing so that you don't have to wait for me to do that, but I am going to uh, center punch where I'm going to drill for uh, the jump ring and then also where I'm going to pierce out this center section. So with center punching, I always use a bench block. And if you've seen um, any of my other videos with cool tools, you know that this center punch is my favorite, so I won't get into it too much, but it's just a two ended uh, snapping center punch with a spring in the middle. So anywhere within the circle, I can just choose a hole to, to pierce out and then I'm also going to decide where I'm going to put that jump ring hole, kind of midpoint towards the top there. And again, you can drill with a drill press or you can uh, drill with your flex shaft. And again, make sure you're using eye protection. And if you're um, not familiar with piercing, that is just uh, taking your jeweler saw frame with your blade, opening it, sliding your piece onto it, and then reattaching the blade under tension so that you can cut an inside section of your piece without uh, sawing in from the outside. So I'm just gonna cut out that circle. circle. This could be any shape that you like. Uh, on other designs, I've cut out different shapes that are more reflective of the, the piece that I'm setting just to make it uh, more interesting. But we're just going with a, a basic design here, working off of a repeated circle motif. finger right at the end there and you want to loosen your saw blade get that out of there and then uh, before you go any further you want to file and clean that up just so it's the, the final shape that you're working with and these plates uh, as far as the material and the gauge this is a, uh, a thinner gauge copper sheet that I've already annealed to make setting a little bit easier uh, but with a little bit of oomph, you could certainly work with a thicker sheet metal and certainly if you like the designs, get into working with sterling silver. So we've filed and rounded out that circle. Now at this point, I can follow where I decided I wanna put those tabs and basically just cut out the tabs past the outer point where the object is gonna sit 
because we need a little bit of space to bend that tab up and then back over the object. So again with piercing, set it up, get proper tension on your blade. And then, and again, your, your tabs could be whatever design works well for you. They don't have to be just a straight tab. You can make that part of the aesthetic of the piece. And I'm just going slightly past the line. I'm going to make these just kind of slightly tapered tabs. Always getting that blade started without breaking is the trick, right? And of course, blades break, so I'll replace that and get these sawn out. Okay, so I've got this all sawn out and I cleaned off the layout lines because I'm assuming this will be the kind of the finish of the piece. So just to rem a reminder of how we had all the layout there and we've gone in and pierced this out. And at this point, you're just gonna bend up the tabs and uh, clean them up before setting in the piece. And uh, if you've seen many of my videos, you know that my parallel jaw pliers are my best friends. So this is more of a tapered jaw, uh, kind of needle nose uh, parallel jaws. And so you just want to grab it right where it's going to be bending up and pull those straight up and out of the way. And again, this is some thinner copper, so it is going to bend a little bit, but we'll, we'll have an opportunity to flatten that out. But we definitely, since these are just rough sawn, we want to get in there and clean these up a bit so that they're not rough. You have them sort of bent up and accessible. And what I found is, you know, everybody has their favorite tools, but for basic uh, flex shaft tool cleanup, I really like this set of uh, kind of the polishing kit and the, uh, the blue wheels are kind of rough enough to even kind of go in and file, but I'll just take the, uh, the rougher points off of these, these tabs, just kind of rounding them off making sure that I'm not hitting the base plate and getting both sides there. Yeah, they're looking acceptable for a quick job. And then just kind of going in with that blue abrasive wheel, just cleaning up the rough file mark. And again, with these designs, so many opportunities. You could shape the different tabs. You can cut other negative spaces out of that base plate. You could even cut negative spaces out of the tabs. So many great basic design variations to play with. I'm just kind of going for a, a rough kind of matte finish over this whole thing for a quick demo piece. Making sure any rough edges or burrs are removed so they're not going to catch on anybody's clothing, anybody's skin. All right, and I'm just going to adjust those tabs a little bit to make sure that they're straight and out of the way. All right, I think that then you can give it a check before making sure that it's fitting well. So I would do any of the, the kind of final finishing before setting this piece in. So I would probably cut and shape the bail, do some other uh, kind of design work on there. But you can see how the negative space starts becoming interesting on the back of the plate as well. And the great thing about working with Thermonite and setting it is that since it's kind of uh, like a cross between plastic and wood, it's not very brittle and you can really get in there and set kind of aggressively and lay those, those tabs into the piece uh, pretty solidly. So uh, with this thinner gauge copper, I can kind of start that happening and getting them into place. 
and then just go in with um, now other materials. I definitely would not do this, but um, go in with a little goldsmith's hammer and tippy tap those down on. And just kind of working around, getting it set into the piece. And you have a pretty, pretty quickly set little pendant there. And there's numerous variations within uh, Mickey Johnston's handouts. I love the ones that incorporate a bale without any kind of soldering. Uh, and again, with all sorts of different design variations based on, on what you're going to set. So certainly you don't have to set Thermonite. Any myriad of objects you could be setting in there with uh, shells and beach glass and found stones and, and uh, even other kinds of materials of your own creation. I've even uh, set small enameled cabochons. Many, many possibilities. So I uh, hope this is a fun, fun little exercise for you to explore and I'd love to hear about what you end up making with it. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.